All right, so the last time I did section 2.2, it was kind of a long video, so let me try to cut it down a little bit. If it gets to be long, I might put it into two parts. Um, just about everything in this section, uh, you, it's going to be reviewed from elementary school, really. So if you have kids and they're in seventh grade, you might be doing the exact same thing because there isn't anything too crazy in this section. So in this section, we talk about perimeter and we talk about area. And perimeter is just the length of the boundary of a two-dimensional figure. I um, made a picture of a rectangle down here, and this rectangle has four sides. It would be nice if I had units labeled with these sides, but the picture that I found apparently didn't have units. The perimeter of this rectangle is the length of the boundary, or the length, the sum of the length of the, the edges. So when I went to find the perimeter, I added the seven, the three, the 7 and the 3 and got 20. It would be nice if I had some sort of units. Like it would be nice if this said 7 centimeters, 3 centimeters, 3 centimeters, and 7 centimeters. Then I could have said the perimeter is 20 centimeters. Some of you might have been able to do this perimeter of a because it's a rectangle because you know the perimeter formula for a rectangle. The perimeter for a rectangle is twice the length times twice the width. Usually when I have a rectangle, I make the longer side the length and the shorter side the width. I could have calculated this perimeter by going 2 times 7 plus 2 times 3. And I'm going to get that same number 20 because this is just going to be 14 plus 6. It's going to be 20. Always when we do a, an answer for perimeter and or area, we should have units. And the units for perimeter don't have, like, they're not square or cube, they're just linear units. When we have a circle, the perimeter of a circle, for whatever reason, they don't choose to use the word perimeter for a circle, they use the word circumference. And I can't find the perimeter or circumference of a circle by just adding up the length of the sides because... Um, Usually I don't know that, and there's a formula for that that we'll get to in a bit here. So there's going to be a few, few formulas that will help us find perimeters, but really for like that rectangle, which is a two-dimensional shape, not a 3D shape, that has a border that has only straight lines, just adding up the length of each of the sides will be sufficient to find the find the perimeter. I don't know a lot of formulas for perimeters, even though on the next sheet I'm about to show you a few. Usually if I'm asked to find a perimeter and it's not a circle, meaning if all the sides are uh, straight lines, I just add up the length of the sides. So anyways, here's some perimeter formulas just in case you're interested. For a triangle, it doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is. It could be a right triangle. It could be an acute or obtuse, if you know what those mean, triangles. To find the perimeter of a triangle, you just add up the three sides. There's no special formula for it. For a square, because all the sides of the square of a square are supposed to be the same. So if this is a square that has one side that's measured length A, then I'm assuming that all the sides are length A. I could find the perimeter of this square by just going A plus A plus A plus A, adding up the length of the four sides. But A plus A plus A plus A equals four times A. So you could find the perimeter of a square just by multiplying four by one of the sides. Interesting. I don't like this so much. I'm going to call this um, width and length for my rectangle. For a rectangle, I did this already, you can find the perimeter of a rectangle by adding the sides, or you could use the formula twice the length plus twice the width equals the perimeter. And it turns out that here there's a common factor of a 2. If you factor out that common factor of a 2, you can just do 2 times the length plus width and get the perimeter. For example, on this rectangle that I added up the four sides to found, find the perimeter, I used twice the length times twice the width formula to find the perimeter. I also could have done this. I could have said the perimeter is twice the sum of the length and the width. And I can get that same number 20 by just multiplying 2 and then adding up the other sides, in this case 3 and 7. And this would give me the perimeter is 2 times 10. And it's still 20. It probably always should have units on my perimeter. 
So lots of formulas for um, finding the perimeter of a rectangle. Um, at least two, I guess that's not lots, but there's multiple ways to find the perimeter of a rectangle. And when I copied this picture from some website, they called it height and width. I like length and width so much more that I decided that I'm going to call the sides of any rectangle length and width. And I could use either of those formulas to find the perimeter. The next shape is a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral, quadra kind of meaning four. Quadrilateral is any shape that has four sides as long as the sides are straight lines. So this is a non-special quadrilateral. It's just a generic four-sided side, four shape. Because these shapes can, these sides don't have to be the same lengths, the only way to be guaranteed to find the perimeter of a quadrilateral is just to add up the length of the four sides. The big one right here that the, is a formula that I need is the perimeter of a circle. And the perimeter of a circle is called a circumference. The circumference of the circle, you can find it using one of two different formulas. One of it is 2 pi times r, where r is the radius, and the radius is the distance from the center of a circle to the outside edge. The other formula that's equally good to find the circumference of a circle will have the diameter in it. And the diameter is the distance across a circle, of a line going across a circle that passes through the center. Another way to find the circumference of a circle is to do pi times the diameter. This is because the 2r in this formula above is a diameter, because the two, two radiuses make one diameter. So both of these formulas I can use to find the perimeter of a circle. Let me do an example now. I'm kind of skipping some things if you have um, the my video in, or my printout in front of you because I don't think I need to do ev everything. This, these kinds of problems on the uh, test are really pretty nicely done. So find the circumference of the circle. Because I'm given the radius, I'm going to use the circumference equals 2 pi times r. My answer should have units, and this little double quote means inches. So in this circle, I'm given a circle with a radius of 5 inches, and I'm asked to use the formula, or I need to use the formula 2 pi r, and in for r, I'm going to put 5. So I'm going to say the circumference is 2 times pi times 5, and I'm going to multiply the 2 and the 5 and get the circumference is 10 times pi, and I need to have units. When I go to write my answer, I could just put these little tick marks next to it for the circumference, meaning that it's inches. Or I can write 10 pi. I could write out the word inches. I can abbreviate inches. In this chapter, there's if a formula has pi in it, I usually leave the pi in my answer. If I don't want you to have pi in your answer. I'll tell you what to use for pi, and I'll say probably use 3.14 for pi. So because this problem said find the circumference of the circle, and it didn't make a comment about use 3.14 for pi, then I left my answer like this. If this problem had right at the end, if it said use pi equal to 3.14, then I would take the time and I would, instead of doing 10 times pi, I would have done, did 10 times 3.14 and I would write the answer C for circumference equals 31.4 and then something that represents inches. So um, by default, we're going to leave pi as the, the symbol pi unless in the instructions it tells us to use um, 3.14 for pi. All right, ready to do some homework problems. So the first four pro problems give us circles and that have um, either the radius or the diameter marked, and it just wants us to find the circumference and include proper units and leave my answer in terms of pi. So I'm not going to make the pi 3.14. For both problems 1 and 2, we should use the formula circumference is 2 pi r because in both my problem and your problem we have the radius. So for my problem 2 I'm going to say the circumference is 2 times pi times 6. If I want to I could put 6 centimeters in so I don't forget the centimeters and then when I simplify this I would only multiply the 2 and the 6 and I would leave the pi and I'd leave the centimeters. The answer to number 2 C standing for circumference is going to be 12 pi 
centimeters. For your problem one, if you didn't get it already, the answer is 28 pi meters. When we go to do three and four, I'm going to be tempted to use the other formula, circumference equals pi times the diameter, because the length that I give you in problem three and the length that I have in problem four is the length all the way across through the center of the circle, which is the diameter. So when I go to do my problem four, I'm going to say the circumference is pi times and then either three or I could put three yards. My answer needs to have yards in it, but it, my work doesn't need to show the yards. So um, my circumference for this is just going to be three pi yards. When you go to do your problem three, you should get 16 pi centimeters for your answer. When I go to do problem six, this is asking me to find the perimeter of a rectangle, and I kind of like the formula perimeter uh, Perimeter is twice the length plus the width, and usually I make the length the longer and the width the shorter, but it really doesn't matter. You don't have to use this formula to get your answer, but I kind of like this formula. So what I'm going to do in my formula, I'm going to make the length or the L in my formula 10 centimeters, I'm going to make the W in my formula 4 centimeters, and I'm not going to include the units until I get to my answer because I don't need them. I can know what the units of my answer are going to be anyways. So to get that, I'm going to use that formula, plug in the 10 and the 4 properly. Orders of operations ask me to do parentheses first. And then my answer, my P stands for perimeter, C stands for circumference, A stands for area for us. My answer is going to have 28, and then my units are going to be centimeters. Some teachers might really be bugged that I'm letting P stand for perimeter and not writing it out. I don't have any problems with your answer looking something like this to problem 6. Or you can write out the word perimeter. For that matter, when I wrote my answer keys, look at your answer for number five, apparently is 24 centimeters, and I didn't even write P equals. So as long as you get the right number, I'm not gonna be picky about you writing P or perimeter. As long as you get the right number, I'll be okay. The next two shapes are parallelograms because the opposite sides are parallel. And in each one of our shapes, we have a, a a number that's given that doesn't belong in the perimeter computation. This distance right here is called a height, and it's inside and not along the perimeter of a parallelogram. It's not needed for the um, perimeter computation. So when I go to find my perimeter, I don't include the height. The height is the distance between the two parallel, two, one of the sets of parallel sides, and it's not something that belongs in the perimeter computation. Only the lengths along the perimeter or the boundary are needed, and all four lengths aren't given. I'm assuming that the opposite lengths in a parallelogram are equal. And so when you go to do your problem, you're going to, number seven, you're going to assume that the sides are two tens and two fours. If you're clever, you can use the same formula to find the perimeter of a parallelogram as you do a rectangle, or you can just add up all four sides. I can just, for my mind, I can say the perimeter is 7 plus 15 plus 7 plus 15. I think it comes out to 44. My answer to problem 8 is the perimeter is going to be 44. My units are going to be centimeters. For your number seven, apparently the answer is 28 centimeters. Nine and 10 are triangles. To find the perimeter of a triangle, you just add up the three sides. You don't need any special formula. So when I go to do number 10, I can add in any order the three sides, the seven, the nine, and the 12, and that's gonna give me 28. So the perimeter is gonna be 28 centimeters. For your number nine, the perimeter is 436 feet. 11 and 12 are trapezoids, and trapezoids also have heights sometimes drawn. This internal line that I draw right here, that's needed to find the area of a trapezoid. 
it's not needed to find the perimeter. Trapezoids have one set of parallel sides, where parallelograms have two sets of parallel sides. So you're going to need to be able to identify the shape by what it looks like, and this is a trapezoid. Uh, when we get to area, for perimeter, it doesn't matter, other than you need to know how to find the perimeter of a circle using the 2 pi r formula. For my circumference, I mean for my perimeter, I'm just going to add up the four lengths. It's going to be 6 plus 16 plus 12 plus 20. That's what, 32, 42, 54 if I did it right? So my answer for 12 is going to be the perimeter is 54 centimeters. For your problem 11, apparently the perimeter is 20 inches. So um, that's the end of perimeter. That's the easier part of this. Not that, not that the um, area is particularly hard. So the area is the amount of two-dimensional space that an object covers. And when we do area, we need to have units squared. So every area that I'm asked to find, somewhere's in it, I'm going to say that the area is, has so many square units. So I drew a picture here to help you understand what area is. Here's a rectangle. It has a width of 4 and a length of 9. And if I take this rectangle and I cut it up and make 9 cuts going um, vertically, so I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine rows essentially, or and then one, two, three, four. This right here, there are four boxes and nine boxes. And I tried to make each one of these boxes a one by one box. The area of each one of these boxes is one square unit. This is what it means to have a square, the area is square something. It's a square unit is a square that's one by one. So each one of these squares is a, a square that's one by one unit. If you count up the number of squares in here, it's nine, nine by four, there's 36 squares in there. So there, in this rectangle, there are 36 one by one squares. So we would say the area of this rectangle is 36 square units. Of course, most of us know the area formula for a rectangle. The area formula for a rectangle is length times width. And I could have gotten this area by just saying the area is the length, which I usually make the longer length, times the width, which I usually make the shorter, shorter length. The area as a number is 36. And I'm always going to need units. There weren't units on this to um, to shove in, but um, the problem once we get into um, non-theory problems, we'll have more units. So, bunch of bunch of formulas in this section. You don't have to have any of these formulas memorized. They're all going to be given to you on a test. So, um, as we need the formulas, I'm going to pull back the shapes and find the uh, formula. Most of you know what triangles are. I mentioned parallelograms. Parallelograms have two sets of parallel sides. To find the area of a parallelogram, you need the height, which is the length that between one of the sets of parallel sides. A rhombus is a special kind of parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides, but they all have the same length. It's kind of like a crooked square in some sense. We know rectangles, we should know squares. I mentioned trapezoids. Trapezoids have one set of parallel sides, and then the non-parallel sides may be the same length, but they don't have to be the same length. And for parallelograms, for rhombuses, and for trapezoids, you need to have a height in the area formula, and um, I'll get to them in a second. And then lastly, we have the circles. It's not the best drawing of a circle, but for a circle, you need to know the radius to find the area. And for, yeah, I'll go through examples of most of these formulas. And you don't have to have these memorized. They'll be given to you on the test. But on the test, you won't have the picture to tell you what the shape is. So here's an example. I'm asked to find an area of the following shape. And it has one set of parallel sides, not two sets of parallel sides. So that makes this a trapezoid. So I'm going to go to my formula and 
the area formula for a trapezoid is the most complicated. Big B, it's big B plus little b times h over 2. So my area formula is parentheses big B plus little b times h over 2. In this problem, the h is always the internal line that connects to the parallel sides. So in this problem, the h is going to be 6 feet. And then the big B and the little b are the sides connected by the height. Usually, I make the big B the longer of the two sides connected by the height, and the little b the shorter of the two sides connected by the height. When I go to find my area, my uh, answer should have units in it. The units should be square feet. And I can show the units in my computations, but quite honestly, it makes it harder. But let me just show you how I might do that with, with the units. So I can say the area is big B, which is 9 feet, plus little b, which is 4 feet, times the height, which is 6 feet, over 2. I do parentheses first. So the parentheses here want me to add 9 feet and 4 feet. And when you're adding, you don't get square units. So 9 feet plus 4 feet is 13 feet. So I have the area is 13 feet times 6 feet over 2. I have my choice of multiplying and then canceling or canceling then multiplying. I'll, I'll not cancel first. So now I'm going to multiply the 13 and the 6. I think that's 78, but I don't need to do that without a calculator. So the numerator comes out to be 78 for a number, and then I'm multiplying feet times feet, and it's when you're multiplying you get square units. So feet times feet is going to be square feet, and then divide it by 2. Last thing I need to do is just divide 38 divided by 2, and I'm going to get an answer for this. The area is going to be 78 over 2 which is 39, and the units are square feet. Usually I write it with a, the unit with a little exponent rather than having to write the word square feet, but I could have said the area is 39 square feet. It would have been completely fine. Generally, when I'm asked to find area, I don't show any of the units in my work, and I just put the units in my answer because I know what the units are supposed to be, and it's a lot less cumbersome to go through the work without showing the um, units. All right, so here's another shape. This is not a rhombus. Um, for it to be a rhombus, all these sides have to be the same lengths, and they're not. I'm assuming this is a parallelogram. I'm assuming I have two sets of parallel sides. And then the parallelogram, you need the distance between one, one of the sets of parallel sides, and that's going to be called the height. The formula for a parallelogram is area is base times the height, and the base is the length of one of the sides that the height connects. So they're going to have the same side. So for this parallelogram, the base is going to be this 8 centimeters, and the height's going to be 4 centimeters. To find the area of a parallelogram, it's base times the height. The height is internal. It's the length of a line that connects two of the parallel sides. The base is the length of the side that it, they connect. If I was doing this, I probably wouldn't include my units, but I could put my units in right from the start and keep them with my answer. For my answer, I'm going to multiply the 8 and the 4 and get 32, and I'm going to multiply the centimeters and the centimeters and get centimeters squared. Quite honestly, if this was a test, I probably would show this. The area is 8 times 4, and then I'm going to write A for area, then I'd sneak on the units. If you get the units wrong, you're going to lose a point or two. So try to at least get the units right, even if you're not including them in your work. So I have a circle I'm asked to find the area for, and it told, I'm told to leave my answer in terms of pi. So again, I don't have a lot of formulas memorized, so I look to my sheet here. The area is pi times r squared. So my area formula is pi r squared. Because the units are in inches, when I go to write my answer, I'm going to have square inches in my answer. And I probably won't use the inches in my computations. I just have to have the right units in my answer. I don't need to keep them in my computation. So for my area formula, I'm going to write pi, 
and then for the radius I'm going to write 2 and 2 squared is 2 times 2. I'm going to leave the pi in my answer. I'm going to multiply the 2 times 2 and get a 4 and write it before the pi. So pi times 2 squared comes out to be 4 pi. And for an answer, I'm going to say the area is 4 pi inches squared. And then, of course, if I don't like writing the symbol for square inches, I certainly could have written the word square inches. So that word inch square inches is the same as that symbol. If you like writing words better than symbols, more power to you. I've got no problem with that. Now we're asked to do some homework problems, and the first one's a triangle. I haven't done a triangle yet. So the area formula for a triangle is base times the height over 2. The height is always, well not always, it's usually inside the triangle, but it can be outside the triangle, which we'll see on the next example. Let's, so your problem 13, the height is going to be 18. You're going to assume the lengths are inches. And the base is the length of the side that the height connects. connects. The area formula you need is base times height over 2. Might, might as well just do 13. The answer to 13, I know what the units are going to be. I'm supposed to assume the units are in inches. So my answer is going to be the area A equals something in square inches. And I'm just going to get that by multiplying the base 25 times the height 18 and dividing it by 2. I can do that in one quick computation. I could just go 25 times 18 divided by 2. And I'm going to get the area is 225 square inches. And when I go to write an answer for number 13, when I wrote my answer on the key, I wrote 2825 square inches. When I did the problem here, I wrote the symbol. Those are interchangeable for us. 15 and 16 have external heights. So the triangle in problem 15 is that triangle. And the dashed lines are to help you understand what the height is. And my triangle in problem 16 is this triangle. In 16, my base is 5, and the drawing tells me the height is 8. Sometimes to figure out the height, that the height has to be drawn outside the triangle. That's, this is the case here. For you, in problem 10, your height's going to be the 10 meters. Hopefully you can read that that says 10 meters. And your base is going to be the 14 meters. I'm going to use the formula area is base times height over 2. And when I do my problem 16, I'm going to say the area is 5 for the base, 8 for the height, over 2. I don't need my calculator for that. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. I do need to have inches and square inches in my answer because it's area. 17 and 18 are a little bit tricky because the height of my triangle is the side that connects with a right angle. Well, I don't have the length of that height, so I need to use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the height first. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean Theorem. I'm going to say h for height, so the height squared plus, and then I know that this side is a c, and this side is an a or a b. I'm going to call it a b, I guess. So I'm going to get the height squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Um, this is going to give me the height squared plus 144 equals 169. And then I'm going to minus 144 from both sides and get the height squared equals 25. I guess I didn't need my calculator. And then I'm going to square root, square root, and get the height is equal to 5. So now I can work on my um, triangle and find its area. Because my area is base times the height over 2, the height is the side that goes from one of the one of the corners to the other side that forms a right angle. 12 is going to be my base. I'm assuming the lengths are in inches, so my answer is going to have square inches written in it. I'm going to use the area as base times height over 2. And for my triangle, I'm going to do 12 for the base. I'm going to do 5 for the height. I'm going to divide by 2. I can do that in my head. That's 60 over 2, which is 30. So my area is going to be 30, and I need to have units, and I'm going to write square inches, or I could write the symbol that's the mean square inches. 
even though I had to do some algebra to find the height, the question only said find, well, it said find A and then find the area. I, I guess I could say little a equals 5 inches and the area equals 30 square inches. I don't think I really intended that. I want you just, the answer I really want to just be the area. When I did problem 17, I did actually say little a equals 7, should say 7 inches and the area is 84 square inches. Um, on the test, and I think, I don't think there's a problem like this on the test, but I think it would just say find the area. But given me both, there's nothing wrong with it. All right, apparently problem 20 wants us to write both um, values. And for your triangle, this T is going to be the height. The 12 is going to be the base. I'm assuming the units are in centimeters. And let me go through. Um, I won't do 20. I'll do 19 with you. So first thing I'm going to do is find T. I know that the 13 is a C. I'm going to go T in this case. I'm going to go T squared or H squared if I want to call it H plus B squared, which is 12 squared, equals 13 squared. And I think we just kind of did this. This gives me T squared plus 144 equals 169. I subtract 144 from both sides and get T squared equals to 25. I square root and I square root and I get T equals to 5. It's a length, so it should be in centimeters. That's going to be part of my answer, I guess. And then I'm going to find the area in the triangle by using base times the height over 2. The base I'm going to put 12. The height I'm going to put 5. So I'm going to say the area is base, which is 12, times height, which is 5, over 2. Sometimes I use time symbols and sometimes I use parentheses. When I'm multiplying, it doesn't matter. So I could have written, written either of those. And both of those are going to come out to give me the number 30. So apparently, for the answer to this, I want you to say T is 5 centimeters, and the area is going to be 30 centimeters squared. You'll see I got lazy when I wrote my answer. I wrote T equal to 5 and didn't put the units down, and area is 30 centimeters squared. I should have really had the units if I'm asking for them. 21 and 22 are parallelograms. To find the area of a parallelogram, the formula is base times the height. The height's the internal line. The base is the length of the, each of the sides that the parallel, the height connects. These will have the same side so length. So for mine, I'm going to ignore this side because it's not um, a base or a height. The height is the line, the length of the line that connects the two sides that forms a right angle. The base is the length of the side that it connects. And I'm going to use the area formula as base times the height. I'm going to say the area is the base, which is 15 centimeters, times the height, which is 5 centimeters. And when I go to write my answer, not only am I going to multiply those, but I'm going to put units. And the units are going to be square centimeters, because centimeters times centimeters are square centimeters. For your problem 21, the answer is 30 square centimeters. You should be able to check that. Is it really? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, I'm not even going to do 24. Um, for 20, well, I will quickly here. For 24, the height is 8, the base is 15, the area is going to be 15 inches times 8 inches, and I believe that's 120 inches squared. Area always has square inches. So your 23 is going to have a decimal. You might need to use your calculator for it. 25 and 26 are trapezoids. For trapezoids, you need the height, which is the internal length, usually, that connects the sides at a right angle. And you need a big B and a little b. The big B is generally the length of the longer side that the height connects, and the little b is the shorter side. So I'm using the formula area is big B plus little b times h over 2. And when I do this, I'm only going to put the units in my answer. So I'm going to write 8 for big B, 4 for little b, 5 for the h over 2. This is going to give me, if I do parentheses first, 
12 times 5 over 2. And then I could cancel the 12 and the 2, or I could multiply the 12 and the 5 and then cancel. I'm going to multiply the 12 and the 5 and get 60 and then cancel. Regardless of how you simplify this, there's only one final number. And my answer for problem 26 is going to be the area equals 30 square centimeters. Um, I don't know if you can read this. So um, the sides that are labeled in your trapezoid, the height is 10.6 meters, and here's the other two sides that you're going to need. 27 and 28 have more sides labeled than I need. When I go to do 28, the height is the internal side, that, internal line that connects the parallel sides at a right angle. The big B and the little b are the sides that the height connects. To find the area of 28, I'm going to go area is big B plus little b times the height over 2. So my area is going to be big B, which is 16, plus little b, which is 6, times the height, which is 14, over 2. I do parentheses first. 16 times 16 plus 6 is 22. And now I'm just going to do this on my calculator. So let me do this quickly on my calculator. I'm going to go 22 times 14 divided by 2. And I get 154 for my number. And my units need to be square inches. So my answer for the area for 28 would be 154 square inches. Um, when you go to do problem 27, you're not going to worry about that side. You're not going to worry about that side. Oh, you only need the height and the length of the sides that the height connects, the little b and the big b. The extra sides you need for the perimeter, but I don't need the perimeter uh, here. So um, when you go to do problem 27, apparently your answer is 130 square centimeters. And I don't remember flashing an answer up for 25, but when you did 25, you should have gotten 119.18 square meters, which you could have written as meters squared. All right. Oof. Trapezoid again. Easy enough. For this problem, I'm going to do height, little b, big b. Area is big B plus little b times the height over 2. So my area is going to be 6 plus 2.5 times 5 over 2. I can be ultra lazy and do it just like this. I can do it without doing any work in my hand, head. I can go 6 plus 2.5 in a parentheses, and then times 5 by putting in a parentheses, and then divide it by 2. And then I'm going to get the area. Numerically, is 21.25. New unit-wise, it's square centimeters. And I could write the word square centimeters. Well, I could write the word square, then abbreviate centimeters. I don't care to write centimeters out. Or I can write the symbol. So um, I'm going kind of fast, but by past experience, this was almost insulting for a lot of students, and they don't really need to watch the video. So um, I'm trying to save some time from the last time I did this video. All right. Um, for area of a rectangle, I'm going to use area equals twice the length plus the width. I kind of like that formula. Your rectangle, if you can't read the sides, they're 16 and 9 centimeters. For me, I've got 12.6 and 6.4. I'm going to make the length the longer and the width the shorter of those sides. I'm going to say the area is going to be 2 times 12.6 plus 6.4. And again, if I don't want to do work in my head. I don't have any problem with you just pressing buttons on your calculator. As long on the test, as long as you get the right answer and you show me the numbers plugged into the formula before you actually enter it on your calculator, I'm fine with this for, for your amount of work. So if this was my key for problem 32 and it was a test question, I probably should, this would be exactly what I would show. I might not even show the area formula. I might just show those two lines. Your problem 31, I think it's 144 centimeters squared for the area. 
33 and 34 give me squares. And the area formula for a square, it says L squared. I usually say it's side squared, but it's just the length of one of the sides squared. So my area, I'll be consistent with the f formula there. It's length squared. All of those fives are a L. So my area is going to be 5 squared. And my answer to 20, 34 is the area is going to be 25. And then I'm going to write centimeters squared. For 33. Three, it's 64 centimeters squared. We've got a bunch more problems to do. And I'm just about 40 minutes into the video. That's why this takes so long. For a circle, I need the pi r squared area formula. So area equals pi r squared. I'm going to put 6 in for the r for mine. So area is going to be pi times 6 squared. I'm going to square the 6. 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. I wasn't told to plug a number in for pi, so I'm going to leave the pi in my answer. My units are going to be square centimeters. For your problem 35, the area is 16 pi centimeters squared. For both 37 and 38, I'm not given the radius, I'm given the diameter. I have to divide the diameter by 2 to get the radius. So my radius is going to be half the distance of the diameter. It's going to be 4. When I go to find my area for 38, I'm assuming the units are inches. My area is going to be pi times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. I'm going to leave the pi. And I don't know how to write that as squared, so I'm going to write square inches. I could have written the word square inches. I have no idea if it would be OK to do 16 pi inches squared. I I've never seen that. It looks weird, but I suppose you could do that. For 37, you're going to get 9 pi square inches. 39 and 40. Uh, this is where I'll probably break the video into a second part. So for 40, my radius is going to be the diameter 58 divided by 2. Apparently that's 29. My area can be found by doing pi r squared. So my area is going to be pi times 29 squared. I'm going to pull out my calculator to do the 29 squared. And my answer is going to be the area is 841. Pi stays there, and my units are centimeters squared. When you go to do 39, I got 64 pi centimeters squared for that area. So that's going to be part one. We'll do a part two. It shouldn't be a, a real long part two, but it's already, we're already 40 minutes into this. This is a good time to stop.